All right, what is up, friend and fellow anti-netter? It is I, Scott Shepard here. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna take you through a quick tour. Well, maybe not so quick, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to show you a in-depth, in-detail glimpse at my drawer, my main drawer for how I wrote the book on the anti-net settle costum. Now, I didn't finish the book yet. It's uh, the first draft is complete and it's being edited right now. But I can say that, well, the method works. Lumen was right. I can see why Johannes Schmidt calls him a publication machine. Anyway, this is the section for my book. It's, uh, as you can see, it's like, the main section is really 4214. And this originally was for my Zettelkasten section, yet it's kind of like my anti-net Zettelkasten section. It's about all my material and research that I've done while learning about Lumen's Zettelkasten in its true form, the analog form, the crazy form, which is writing out things by hand and linking your ideas together. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how mine is set up. And I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, the ugly, and how and why I feel it's very important for you to not get obsessed and stuck on mistakes because you're gonna see a ton of mistakes. I'm gonna point out the mistakes and we're gonna go through my cards uh, in sequence, okay? So anyway, here is the here is the, the first like section. I, <laughs> I put white out here on my like the top of the section and then I just put in pen and I draw, um, you know, what, what the actual number is. So that's, indicates 4214. All right, so at the beginning of this, I have, this is called like a section collective and I don't even ever use this card, but it's card 4214. So I saw Lumen did this. He would, he would kind of create like a section like ideology for instance, or like functionality and organizations and all this stuff. And he would have some links and card links. These are called card links. And so another thing you'll notice is I, put, I have lit indexes here. This is when I, I didn't, I call them external references now and I put them in the bib box now. But when I was first starting out, I didn't know that uh, Lumen had a separate area for the notes that he took while reading. So that's the notes that go in the bib, bib box, the bibliography box, I call them bib cards. So, you know, I still have this section 4215 over here, which I can, you know, show you. They're kind of like, these were my first, when I first learned how to do, actually do bib card notes, they looked like this. And look at, I had an address on them. This for, was for RNs. And I don't, I don't do this anymore, obviously. You know, I file them in the, the bibliography box, but I kept the mistake. I still keep it and it still works. It's functional. You know, when I come across cards that link me to 4215, then I'm like, oh, that's like an old note. And wow, I can't believe I'm actually using this note. So it's pretty cool. So that's one of the benefits and one of the reasons to stick with your system uh, and evolve your mistakes and not try to go back and get hung up on them. So anyway, I'm gonna follow that back over here. So anyways, this is the first card. Um, I also put down like closely related C structure. So that indicates to me to go to um, the index and uh, look up, essentially look up um, like uh, structure and systems and info science and all that. So anyway, that's, that's what it looks like. So we're off to a good start. I've already shown you one mistake. Now, now this section, I'm going to show you this. Oh, this is really cool. I'm going to show you something else. Here's a trick I do so you can see it. I have this little thing handy. This is just like a bunch of blank lime green, of course, my favorite color. Uh, so I put this in here as placeholders so I don't have to go back and find my spot. Now, at the start of this branch, as you can see, I have uh, essentially the, like a bunch of collectives and card references. So this is a settle cost in branch one. I don't even write branch anymore. I just will put like settle cost in one. And look at how the ID is here. Okay, 4214 slash negative 1000 slash one. I did this so that I can like pull the card and have it be have it always be towards the front because this is kind of like this this collective of items this is a, a sectional collective these are emergent in nature there's no like like order to this you know it's like possible biases you know and this it just these emerged over time okay so i added them to my like branch index or branch collective um over time okay 
So the first one is the definition of Zettelkasten, who is I find it at 4214 slash zero. Then Zettelkasten numbering schemes, 4214 slash one. Neuro imprinted Lumen examples. This means I actually went through Lumen's cards and had them translated online and then wrote out by hand the translated versions, okay? And writing original notes, main notes, possible cognitive bias fallacies, right? And you'll see, I also, I put them in square, square brackets. This is also a convention I don't really do anymore. What I do now is I put them in quotes or usually not even double quotes, but single quotes. That's what my card links look like. Topics, bibliographic and literature notes, index, fleeting notes. So yeah, the, this is this uh, this is the main section at the, the front of my branch on Zettelkasten. So you can see this one. And I don't really have a rhyme or reason why I'd use different colors. Um, I find that the I've gravitated to using four by six inch cards that are lined for these collective type of items. They just help me keep things more organized. Okay, so you can see this here. You know, Lumen precisely on how he reads. Just like anything important that I would come across and that I'm like, oh, I want to be able to find that sec that section later in this whole, you know, beast of a like knowledge base. Like I would, I put it down here. Okay. And that is, that is the basic look at like, this is like the, the branch collective at the start of uh, at the start of a drawer. I can't say drawer right now, drawer. I guess it helps if you actually say it freaking fast. God damn, freaking, I don't know why. Sometimes I have a speech impediment. It's like a mental thing or something. <laughs> now I'm not gonna be able to say drawer. I'm gonna stop, I'm just gonna say, say cabinet now instead of drawer. God damn it, I said drawer again. All right, anyway, um, what you're looking at next is this section. Now I call these like, I would call them like intentional collectives or I've, I forgot even what I call it in the book. I, like they're pre, pre predetermined uh, collectives. Now these, this is this these notes, and this is the outline that I used for my book. Okay, so I've got front matter, right? Acknowledgements, intros for my book. I have the why, the what's the point of a book? Like why a book on Zettelkasten? And I've outlined how I created these cards um, in previous videos, like how to write a book on uh, using a analog Zettelkasten. Um, but these are kind of like, think of them as um, each one is like a, um, a section of the book or a chapter of the book. And I have why a book on Zettelkasten with the link. And when I go to that, I'm like, that section is essentially already written and roughly written for me. Of course, you have a communication experience when I navigate, like if I navigate why, to, why a book on Zettelkasten, when I, once I navigate to that item in here, then you pull it out and you write with this as, and it's a communication experience. So you use these cards as a cue and they're nicely developed cues. Okay, so that uh, explains that. So this is, you know, sections of the book. And for a long time, you saw in my, maybe you saw seen in my previous videos, I had these all laid out on the desk next to me, next to my computer, and I would go through them. Nicholas Lumen research, these are like research items. The Myths of Zettelkasten, Maine, Takes Years. This is a chapter I just published and shared recently. Um, and this is interesting. I just shared this. If you go to the Antinet com Reddit community, or if you go to my Twitter profile, which is uh, lit, all the links and all that stuff is in the bio, or if you're a cool person and actually subscribe to my private email list, then you got a link to a chapter, chapter 17, The Myths of Zettelkasten. This chapter was built out of this card right here. So, and I, you know, it's, that's like, it's like 20,000 words, that chapter. It's a beast, right? It's like 70 something pages. It was created from this little collective right here. Now, of course, it points me to these card link addresses, which are pretty massive. And, but yeah, that's, that's essentially how it was written. Okay. Um, research on the myths of Zettelkasten. I have a section here called the Great Folgazidal Denial. And uh, anyway, this is uh, this is an interesting type of collective that I that I do for um, that I used for writing the book. Okay, so I'll put that back. And um, let's see here.
I guess I had this idea, you know, so this is one of the first cards in the section. It's the preface to the book. So I think I had this, it was just a brief idea one day and I wanted to write it down. So I wrote, I've written this book using my own anti-net and the very principles outlined here in this book. As such, I have been quite judi judicious in citing the sources for the material and also from what it was inspired by. Uh, there are numerous footnotes. My recommendation is to read the book once without getting caught up or stuck on the idea that you ought to read the footnotes. If an idea truly, uh, uh, what is it called? Truly shakes you and resonates with you and is attached to a footnote, by all means, please explore. Otherwise, do not worry about reading the footnotes on your first read through of the book. And the reason I think I had this thought and put it in there is because, you know, I, I didn't want people to get bogged down and feel like, you know, they can't even finish the book or they're chasing rabbit holes because they see all the, the sources cited. Um, you know, Lumen was a, a footnote machine. Um, he footnoted extensively. And instead of me just telling you that and believing it, I'm gonna go over to my bookshelf over here real quick and just show you uh, one of Lumen's, Lumen's books. Okay. This is uh, volume one of Nicholas Lumen's Theory of Society. Okay, he has another one that I have at my, my house. And uh, by house, I mean a, uh, you know, overpriced freaking apartment in uh, downtown San Diego. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm going to show you is like what Lumen's writing looked like and kind of his, how many footnotes he had. I mean, look, at, if we go to the back of the book, you know, starting, I don't know what is on page 359. You know, these are all footnotes right here. Let's see how many footnotes he had in this section of the book. Okay, not an insane amount. There's like 300, but yeah. So let's let's uh, let's try to read some of uh, Lumen's soporific writing. The problem is that despite the clarity or lack of clarity, distinctiveness, and factual indisputability of momentary actualization, Descartes naturally comes to mind. Meaning can represent the world as if it blah, blah, blah. So then he has a footnote here, okay? Then he has, uh, there's another footnote right there, 67. Um, anyway, the reason I did this is because I didn't want people to get hung up on like checking footnotes because I've got so many footnotes throughout my book that I didn't want them to get hung up on it. So anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull you out of that rabbit hole so we don't wanna lull ourselves to sleep with uh, Nicholas Lumen's academic writing style. And uh, I think he was purposely complex, by the way. So just because you use a Zettelkasten doesn't mean you're gonna be super complex and confusing like Lumen wrote. Um, you're actually, you can choose your tone. So, okay, here's the next card. Um, Lumen's working style. He says, I like working in the sun. I have the little footnote that says r.lumen short 31. And then his work routine is here, 4214 slash negative four slash one. So that we can just navigate around. Here's another note. So this one says, Lumen's antinet was actually located at his house, not at his office. Um, it says home office. And I have a little footnote is, one can observe this from r.loom home office. That's a, a reference to my Zotero um, reference manager, which I have like the picture of it. Um, his house was about 30 minutes away from Billifield University, Orlinghausen. Uh, Lumen worked uh, Lumen's working library, meaning the number of books he owned, was surprisingly small. As an intellectual and professor, he wasn't swimming in pools of cash. We can presume part of it was due to cost savings. He mostly got his books from libraries. He read from libraries all over the world. In fact, he would largely only speak at university conferences on the condition that they had an interesting library. Then I cite that one from r.undisciplined, that's a, it's a podcast, and then the, the timestamp. Okay. All right, wait. Uh-oh, uh-oh, ladies and gentlemen, I filed in the wrong spot. Okay, now, now we're back to Zen mode. We're, we're doing okay. Here's Lumen's work routine. So you can see that it's section, the section kind of starts at the front with Lumen's stuff, Lumen's workflow. And yeah, that's 
how this stuff develops. Why even important to install, understand Lou and the man. You see in the in the early phases or the in the beginning sections, you know, I start with negative one, like, you know, uh, this was negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. That's an invention that I created because it allows you to really place a card anywhere, if you especially go in, into the negatives. Um, and it just follows like the kind of the law of uh, similarity of, of trying to get the idea that every note you create, you want it near its closest neighbor, its most similar neighbor. Um, let's show you some interesting cards. Um, I'm gonna go back into a, uh, let's go over here. Let's look at, let's look up what the, uh, what I had written for definition, uh, 4214, definition of Zettelkasten. So that's 4214 slash zero, you see that? at the top. Let's go look up this card. Uh, I will, whoever gets that, what I just did right there, that song, um, please comment in the box below because uh, you'll get the, uh, let me know if you get the inside meme of that uh, joke and where that comes from. I'll do it one more time, maybe at a different spot throughout this in this video. All right, what an anti-net is, a thinking tool that becomes your second mind. How? Through its core components. And then I link, I do this little squiggly thing. I don't really do this as much anymore, but this just means that little squiggly line kind of comes from computer code convention. It's like the tilde, which means um, 4214, like within the same branch that I'm currently at. So 4214 slash zero slash one tells me that's where the link is. And then what an anti-net is not is at 4214 slash four and 4214 slash five. I do that little comma to indicate both. So it's kind of cool. You're gonna come up with your own conventions and your own unique ways of doing things. And uh, it's not gonna be like Obsidian or some, you know, whatever the latest, greatest, now log, log seek or log sec is like the coolest, you know, new uh, note taking, digital note taking tool, you know, flavor of the month. You know, it used to be Rome research, you know. Here's the thing is stop majoring in the minor, stop adopting and switching to the whatever new tool is. You know, here's the deal. Go back to the old way, the analog way, the best way. Join the Rebel Alliance with the anti editors and so you never have to switch again or get hung up on all that crap. I mean, yes, I just imagine people like tra <laughs> learning and transitioning their freaking note taking across different apps. Okay, so anyways, I'm still in the section on the definition of Zettelkasten. Quote, to its creator Lumen, the Antinet was not just an analog database, writes Schmidt. It was a container for categorized notes, nor, or it was not a container for categorized notes, nor was it a database with relational capabilities. It was not chaotic for its creator either. The Antinet was not a maze, but a thinking tool, a communication partner and a publication machine. Okay, so, so we're in the section. And, um, and then I have a cool little drawing. This this is another thing. I, I mean, you know, digital, I don't think the drawing experience is as good as, as drawing by hand, but this is a, a diagram I, I made of the Antinet's complexity to simplicity to complexity process. I outlined that in the book. Um, here's a cool here's a cool card. The very next card is this. This is called a Hoplink card, okay? And this is some something Lumen did as well. So People are always ask, asking me like, okay, what if what if a note goes in two spots? Well, here's here's something you can do. You could say, for another diagram showcasing the note taking process as a staging post, see, you know, and then here's the link, right? The link to this one. So I could have filed this card, which is like four two one four slash one zero a two c, you know, which is like right around here, right? I could have, which I could have, I could have filed this, you know, this card, whatever goes there over here, or I could just create a hop link so that I know, oh, okay, I'm gonna go over here next because it's, they're both relevant. And that's, I call it a hop link card, okay? Um, you can also, you don't even have to create a dedicated car, card for this because look at all that, uh, you know, space. You can also go like at the very bottom, this is what this is. I call it a see also link. And you just create like a see also this card, right? But hop link cards are cool and fine and fun to do as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, now I go down this tangent in this stream, you know, from, from this right here to, to talking about um, 
you know, the outcome is the reproduction of complexity by means of selection, the paradoxical reproduction of complexity due, uh, through a reduction of complexity. What he's saying is that like, you're reducing the complexity of a book by, by selecting only the most important material inside of it. And then you're recreating complexity by elaborating and creating notes on the material and then filing it and installing it in your own anti-net settle custom. That's the process I drew out, right? I'm able to, look, I, I created this note months ago, like probably six months ago or something. And you see how fast, like I didn't even have to like look at this, but like you see how fast I was able to recall that knowledge and information. Like it's stamped in my mind, in my brain. Like this was just a nice little cue. And that's why when you, whenever you write during that writing experience, you know, like these serve as cues to get that same thought, that thinking, that understanding, that idea, and just for you to flow and elaborate and add your new perspective into it. That is something again, once again, of the many things, lost in a digital Zettelkasten system, um, a digital note-taking system, in my opinion. My opinion, whenever you're getting ready to write using a digital note-taking system, most of the time it's about like taking all that spaghetti code of data and the mass amount of like data and information and trying to like disentangle it and copy and paste it and put it onto paper. You're not having an actual communication experience with your individual notes and your note cards. That's maybe something that you can start to see. And you're going to hear me preach this over and over, but it's an incommunicable truth. You have to build out your own anti-net settle cost in yourself to know what I'm talking about. All right, with that rant out of the way, let's continue going down here. Um, yeah, this just shows you some of the, the notes and where it comes from, the anti-net process. Yeah, here's here's an interesting thing. This is this shows mistake and how I updated my thinking. Okay, look at this card. So. The majority of Lumen's anti-net were literature and bibliography notes, and I've later found out that was wrong. I did like, you can't really see it, but I did a little um, green scratch out. 75,000 out of Lumen's 90,000 were lit notes. I later found out this was wrong. The way it was worded in this paper made it was very misleading. Um, what what Schmidt actually said was, um, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, this seems to indicate that clearly Lumen did not turn every idea he took on bibliography cards slash staging cards into main notes slash thought notes, right? And that's from the podcast 30, you know, undisciplined podcast minute 32. So then I updated my thinking later on. So now I have the mistake, right? And now I have actually it is, quote, Approximately 75,000 cards consist of notes documenting the results of Lumen's readings, his own thoughts and ideas for publication projects, as opposed to the majority of being indexes ETC. So what I, uh, this is why it consists of notes documenting the results of Lumen's readings, I interpreted those as, as literature notes, they're not. What he's saying is, is those 75,000 notes, those are main notes. Those are notes that, you know, main notes, reflections and reformulation notes, and even excerpt notes that he took as a result of his readings. So, you know, from his readings, he would create a bib card. And then from the bib card, he would create a main card containing, you know, his main thoughts, his main notes that would go in the main box of the actual anti-net Zettel costume. So the reason this is important and good to see is because Lumen did not delete his mistakes. He did not erase his mistakes. He evolved them. Now I have it set in stone permanently. Oh, I made this mistake and I got confused thinking that, you know, of what, while listening to this podcast by Johannes Schmidt, Johannes Schmidt, that uh, Lumen had 75,000, you know, literature notes, right? And then I can update it and show that how, what the corrected version is. So here's why this is important. When I'm writing the book, you know, I can start out with um, a common thing people may get confused by, or at least I was confused by, is that Lumen's notes were primarily bibliography notes or literature notes. Um, you know, thinking 75,000 of his liter notes were literature notes. Actually, this is quite wrong. 
uh, in reality, 75,000 out of the 90,000 notes were main notes, and then I get into it. So you can see how it's important, right? In like digital note taking systems, you would probably just delete the inaccurate information or edit it and update it. So you can never see the holistic, organic evolution of the thought. You can never tell the story and retell the story of how your thinking has evolved. All right, there is another reason why the analog Antoinette Zettelkasten is better than all the digital workflow warriors. All right. Anyway, let's keep going. <sighs> we didn't develop every day. Okay. All right. Here's something cool. All right, I'll just show you this for a second. So this is called, I call these external links or X refs. I really call them X refs now. Um, that's the main thing because external link, I think is a little, people think that would be a card link, you know, like a internet card link. So um, let's see here. So this is says see also molar five and see also R dot molar five. That's like a, if I was to put it in Zotero. What I'm doing, I put it in red. This tells me to actually go see the book, Molar 5. And Molar 5, if I go to my uh, bibliography box, it points me that it's the book called The Radical Lumen by Hans, um, George Hans, Hans George Molar, whatever his name is. So then I would go and do this. I would say, okay, if I'm on a card that says, go and see Molar 5, I would simply get the book out as you can see it's Hans George Muller and I would just go to page five and find what I was looking for boom all right so that gives you a little another little nugget so as you can see this the simp the system is simple yet you know you add your own flair and there's a lot of little complexities you don't need to get overwhelmed with all these little complexities but you know, you'll you'll uh, you'll figure out how to handle these over time. Um, yeah. So that's that. Let's see if there's any other th cards that are interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna try to find something. Let's, let's try to find a. Oh yeah, this this is kind of an old note. old note as well. There are some old notes. I'll show you something in a second. I'm just looking for something interesting here. In the beginning, I would uh, I would create. I got my handwriting's gotten better. Hopefully, you can tell. Um, I would create like I would put in green pen B slash two, you know, and like work on ideas like oh A slash one A slash two, and then later I would figure out where they would go, and I would just uh, you know add the the other thing onto them. That's an interesting artifact and things I don't really do anymore. Um, you know, here's another little experiment. I stopped doing this, but I was like, what if I like, you know, printed out a tweet that had good information on it and then, you know, turn it into a four by six inch note card and put it on there. So this is a, a tweet I wrote, like, I guess on October 29th, 2021, you want a second mind, not a second brain. A brain is just a blob of biological crap. A second mind is the whole, is where the whole becomes greater than the sum of its parts, all right? And then, you know, this section goes into my sec second mind section. And, uh, and yeah. Man, it's just crazy kind of going through this and now, now, now knowing what my book looks like and seeing how, you know, all like how all the thoughts emerged and evolved one card at a time. And like seeing like, look, at, I called them like bib refs, right? 
fixed IDs. I used to call the numeric alpha addresses fixed IDs, and we know today it's not an ID. Like, a, like this is a terminology branch collective. I was like creating terms for the Notebox and Zettelkasten, and uh, look at I was calling it like slash anti-net. You know, this one I didn't even know if I was calling it an anti-net or not, or if I would stick to it. I'm like, anti-net just seems way cooler, right? And it kind of has that cool, cool catchy uh, acronym, you know, A-N-T-I for the anti-net, analog, numeric alpha, tree, index. And look, I was calling it like Zettelbox, Zettelnet. <laughs> look at this thing. Terms for note, leaf, card. Like I, I thought of these as leaves and I still do. I think it's a useful and, and very valid illustration for the structure of this whole thing. It's a tree structure. So I always call them leaves for a while. Zettel links, anti-net links, fixed ID links, you know. Um, I call them card links now. Like this is just like a card link, right? It's like a link and you create like this right here. These are card links, right? Um, and then this is the card address. So that, that just seems like the easiest one, but you can see kind of like how my, my, uh, my thinking has evolved over time. Um, you know, term for permanent notes, I call them main notes because permanent, they're not really permanent. You can evolve and update these, right? So, you know, literature notes, same thing. It's like, what, it, okay, is, is when you take notes from a podcast, is that a literature note? It's like, no, it's uh, so I call them, you know, bib notes. It goes into your bibliography box. It's a, a source note, you know, a sort of external source of information. Oh God, this is funny. Look at this. These are terms over time that I developed. This is probably like a year ago. Terms for Zettelkost and alternative terms. Anti-net, Ananet. <laughs> What's Ananet? I forgot what. Oh, analog net. That's what it meant. Ana web, no card box, no card tree, mind tree, Ana tree. Because I was like trying to figure out how do you explain this thing? Hard mind. I call it hard mind because it's like a way to like develop your mind to the hard way and like stamp ideas onto your mind. Paper brain. <laughs> well, that's a renob idea. Thought tree, card box. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. Um, I remember one night, yeah, like here's more ideas. I bought the domain name, God, like an idiot. I know I probably won't ever use it, but 2MND, second mind, you know? Because a, a second mind is like what Lumen really was talking about when he was communicating with. Like this is like your second mind. It's uh, gained the term now in like even ac academic circles called extended mind, but come on, that's... That's, we don't want to just copy, you know, whatever the popular convention is, right? All right, but then, you know, here's me kind of figuring out and working through, <laughs> look at this, working through the acronyms for the anti-net, right? Because I'm like, I just love anti-net. I kept calling it an anti-net over and over. So it was like analog, because a Zettelkasten is a dumb term, right? It just means notebox. So it's like, Oh, it's a note box. Well, yeah, Lumen's note box wasn't just a note box. It was a special type of note box. You had card addresses. It was branched like a tree-like structure. You had, you know, it was analog in nature. You had your own index, which I have over there. So I was like working through this. I'm like analog, no card tree index. I guess that was my first idea. And then network, right? And then I was like analog note tree, addressed note card tree index, analog note card tree index. Um, you know, this is actual, my actual thinking happening on, on paper. You know, this is, this is not pre-planned notes. This is just me working through all this stuff. Um, look at like, and then I came across and I was like, oh no, I, I think it should be this analog numbered, like, which that's now it's numeric alpha. They're not IDs either. So, you know, my, my thinking at the time has evolved. It's cool. Cause I can kind of see how my thinking has evolved. You know, and then someone said, suggested I do anti-net because anti-net and uh, like analog note tree explorer. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. The entire premise of Nicholas Lumen's 30 year long project that aims to create a theory of everything for how society operates. Uh, so
circulates around the following idea, sociology as a science must transition to a radically anti-humanistic field, meaning non-anthropomorphic. So when Lumen, Lumen said radically anti-humanistic, he wasn't like, oh, I hate humans. He was, and I'm an anti-human. He said, sociology needs to be a system not wherein it's a it's a it's a theory that is seen through the lens of humans and humans are at the center humans are not at the center it's like a natural phenomenon in nature that societies develop and all the theories are kind of through an anthropomorphic perspective which means we humanize every single part of society to like make it relatable as if uh you know humans are the center of nature and it's not and that's what lumen's um that's what lumen's theory was and his goal was and at first glance, it's alarming, but on further rumination, there's deep wisdom in its basis. So too is the term anti-net. It's not anti-internet or anti-digital, technically, but rather it puts forth a unique thinking system structure. So, that's it. I'm gonna put this aside. I wanna make sure that, that this part is in the book. See, these are accidents. It's like, you continue to go down these and, uh, say I'll say it's cybernetic yeah make sure I got that too it's just awesome going through all this stuff we could I had like terms for PKM because I wasn't really liking the PKM term like thinking tool, thinking development. I now call it knowledge development, KDEV, which happened on my, you know, whatever iteration. You can see how like the thinking happens over time. It happens on paper, thinking on paper. Terms for note, note leaves, all this stuff. So anyways, yeah, I don't wanna get too bogged down on this, but you can just see, I'm jumping to a different section here. But yeah, this is, this is what the experience is like building out this, you know, it's a system of order and chaos. Unlike digital systems, which tries to just be, you know, it's like you have one font, you have one standard size, and you just have way too much information. This, on the other hand, is a system of order and chaos. Different color cards, different sizes. You know, Lumen was a lot more universal. He always used four by six inch sizes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, let's go. I remember first building out this section. Like when I first built out this entire thing, it was like four, two, one, four, slash one, slash two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I made it up to 11. And then it was like, you know, the section, this box was like about this thick, you know? And then everything expanded internally. Like, you know, you would go and be like, oh, I'm gonna add this after section three. Um, yeah. You know, this was a, a plan from like a year ago. I set out and, you know, this was like my six week plan. I, I was like reading, so I want to read Lumen's slip box paper. I want to read Johann's, Johannes Schmidt's paper, uh, linking your thinking. I did that course, Sanke Ahrens. Uh, Forte Labs plus Second Brain. I, uh, you know, read a lot of his online articles and I uh, determined that I don't need an, yet an, yet another online course that needs to be like an acronym. Yet, uh, Y-A-O-C, a Yayoke, you know? Who's part of the Yayoke clan? Yet another online course, Jesus Christ. All right, zettelkosten.de, the intro, less wrong. So I read all of these and um, you know, that's part, these are part of my plans and um, fly out to see Lumen's archive in Germany. I've been in touch with Johannes Schmidt about doing that. Uh, he's, you know, your, your typical academic bogged down with a bunch of other, th other stuff. So he's, uh, you know, a snail at getting back to you. <laughs> so who knows, maybe that'll happen one day. Yeah, um, this is a funny card. How Obsidian can get closer to becoming a second mind. Step number one delete their entire code repo and go analog <laughs> kidding or instead you know and then i outline a bunch of things of, of what they could do to help 
their system become more of a second mind, a thinking system instead of just like a information repository, which whether you like it or not, you can add all the links and stuff. It's really just an information store, not a knowledge development system. All right. Uh, yeah. Again, I was outlining my own conventions back in the day. My internet standards and conventions. His name, Stewie. He is still named Stewie, of course, after the Family Guy character. That's where the... That's where that comes from, in case you're wondering. All right. And uh, still, you know, 5,000 points of uh, awesomeness in Scott Shepard's book, if you actually knew where that came from. Main notes, black ink, link format. I, I do blue, or I used to do blue, but... Um, I now do green because I like green. It's my favorite color and it's just cool. Um, lit refs, which are I now call X refs, you know, external references, and that's in red. And then C also, and then no green. So you can see how, um, you know, I've evolved this thing. And yeah, you know, it's just things evolve the old way, the hard way, the best way. Um, you know, that. Yeah, here's some of my, uh... yeah, these are like my bib notes, you know? Um, look at, I've even evolved how I did bib notes. When I read the Paul, uh, the Paul Otlet's Mundaneum book, you know, I was taking lit notes like this because I wanted to fit more, have more room on them. I don't do this anymore, but and I also don't store my bib notes in, or, and I don't call them lit index cards. I call them bib notes and they go in the bib box like Lumen did. You know, this is, I didn't really know at the time. And, you know, cause Sanke Ahrens, as great as his book is, it's also vague as hell. And uh, I had to kind of learn how I go and make mistakes and evolve those mistakes and keep them. Um, look at like <laughs> when I was first reading Ahrens' book, these are like the types of bib notes I was creating, you know, like, and had numbered them, but, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see how much you grow, and uh, it's one of the powers of this system. Here's my notes from uh, Johannes Schmidt's book, you know, the, the myth that Lumen didn't write quotes, um, you know, this is when I started to learn how he actually did stuff. The magic of Zettelkost and his constraints, the constraints breed creativity, they create random surprises, so I learned that on page seven and uh, requiring users to ask questions, quote, gave responses that surprised the asker without these cards just contemplating surprise generator. You know, and these all came became big themes of my book. You know, communication partner must have autonomy, its own personality, right? Um, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, this is uh, this little behind the scenes of uh, Scott Shepard's Antoinette Zettelkost and hope Hopefully it was valuable. Hopefully you can learn something from this. If anything, I think the uh, the call to action is to read my getting started guide, which is uh, posted and pinned on my Twitter profile. Go through the PDF, build it out yourself, and start. That's the the best way is to actually start and learn by doing. As uh, painful as it sounds, I know we want to have all the categories and numbering systems and everything figured out. You know, I outline how to do it, how to get started in the my how-to guide. So just get started and uh, have at it. Anyway, peace and love. Scott Shepard, over and out. Talk to you later. Bye-bye now.